So I'm just going to pretend that that's there. Right, done. Yeah. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. All right, this is Brian Felix. Yes, sir. Brian Felix. All right, Mr. Felix. Okay, can we have the uh, the lawyers put their names on the record, please? Happy Kennedy Swanson on behalf of the Office of the State Attorney. Carter Williams, the Office of the Public Defender. All right. All right, so we have uh, Brian Felix charged with burglary to a structure, criminal mischief, and resisting an officer without violence. Yeah. There's an application for appointment of the Office of Public Defender. I'm going to appoint the Public Defender. I'm sorry. I'm just appointing? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to appoint the Office of Public Defender to represent you. I'm going to find probable cause. Uh, I'm going to set bond on the burglary to a structure in the amount of $2,000. Stay the bond on the criminal mischief and the resisting arrest at one fifty and one hundred dollars respectively. All right. Thank you. Well, I have All right. Is this uh, Angel Santiago? Right here. All right, Mr. Santiago is charged with tampering with uh, with physical evidence and possession of prescriptions without a prescription. Uh, I'm going to find probable cause. I'm going to appoint the office of the public defender. I'm going to stay the bond at $1,000 on the tampering physical evidence and $100 on the possession of prescription drugs without a prescription. Thanks, sir. Jonathan Walters. Yeah, is it easier for me to just do that? I'll yeah. appoint the PD for, for everyone? Yeah, so if you could get to... All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Then I don't even need to say it. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. All right, Jonathan Walters? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Walters, you're charged with burglary to an occupied structure, burglary of a conveyance, and impersonating an employee, a uh, public employee or utility employee. I'm going to find probable cause. Public defender is appointed. Uh, I'm going to set bond on the burglary to an occupied structure in the amount of uh, uh, three thousand dollars. Burglary of conveyance one hundred and fifty, and fraud at one hundred and fifty. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sandalier Mortimer. Uh, Mr. Mortimer is here on five out of county warrants. All set at no bond. They are from Broward County. Stay the bonds at none. Uh, does he get a public defender here, or is he transported to Broward County? Transported to Broward. All right. Thank you, sir. And he does have a reporting requirement. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Isaiah Payne. He refused, Your Honor. All right. I'm a, a public defender is appointed. On the violation of probation, uh, Mr. Payne, I'm going to waive his appearance uh, and uh, stay the bond at none on the violation of probation on 2015CF3923AO uh, and set, stay the bond at none on violation of community control on 2015CF3763AO. Peter Cabrera. I'm going to find probable cause uh, on the. Oh, hang on a second. What do we have? So we have. So the FTAs, uh, there are currently bonds set on those cases. Yes, Ms. Kennedy Swanson. I have an offer for the failure to appear for time served in 19 MM 9848 and 19 MM 9849. All right. So those are the two FTAs. Yes, sir. And that leaves the loitering and prowling in violation of curfew and emergency order. 
Um, so you're uh, you're recommending that if Mr. Cabrera wanted to resolve the two FTAs from, I guess twenty. I'm sorry. How much time does he have in? Um, 45 days on both. 45 days on, on both? Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Cabrera, did you want to resolve the two failures to appear? Uh, the state is recommending, and I would follow that recommendation. I would sentence you to the time that you've already served. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess these are two misdemeanors. Yes. yes okay. All right, good. I'm catching up. Um, then that leaves us with the, with the LMP and the violation of emergency order. Um, what were we going to do with that? Did you want to also make a recommendation on on sentence on that if you want to resolve that as well, Ms. Kennedy? I'll leave that for discretion on that. Okay. Uh, did we ever find um, the owner of the of the charger? The challenger, I'm sorry. I don't have any information as to that, Your Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's address the first two. Mr. Cabrera, did you want to resolve the two? Uh, failures to appear on the misdemeanors? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so how do we do that? Does he have a plea form in front of him? Do yeah. I do this? They will give him a plea form over there for him to sign. Okay. Nope. 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 I'm getting we're, no. No we're plea no form. Longer, I can we're no we're longer doing plea okay. sheets. So it's just right. verbally. All right. I can do this without a, a plea yeah. sheet. All right, Mr. Cabrera, you've indicated an, an, an interest in resolving these two charges. Um, failure to appear. So, so he's pleading to the underlying charges. Is that right? Yes. Two charges of resisting an officer without violence. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, you've indicated that you want to resolve those cases by entering pleas of no contest to two counts of resisting an officer without violence, uh, both first degree misdemeanors. Is that what you want to do, Mr. Career? Yes, sir. Uh, has anyone pressured you or forced you against your will to enter these pleas? No, sir. Are you under the influence of alcohol or drugs? No, sir. Understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, you can be deported by entering these pleas, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, you also understand you have the right to have a trial. At that trial, the state would have the obligation to prove your guilt beyond all reasonable doubt. You'd have an opportunity to cross-examine the witnesses against you, call your own witnesses, testify on your own behalf, or remain silent. Those are all rights that you're giving up by entering these pleas. Is that what you, you understand that? Yes, sir. All right, sir, I'm going to accept your pleas of uh, no contest on... 2019 MM 9848AO. I'm going to accept your plea. I'm going to adjudicate you to be guilty of uh, resisting an officer without violence. I'm going to sentence you to 45 days in the Orange County Jail. I'm going to credit you the 45 days time served. I'm also going to impose man court costs in the amount of $273. I'll give you up to a year to pay that off. You can certainly go to the collections clerk within that time to set up a payment plan. Uh, on case number 2019 MM 9849A-O to the charge of Resisting an officer without violence, I'm going to accept your plea of no contest. I'm going to adjudicate you to be guilty of that offense. I'm going to sentence you to 45 days in Orange County Jail with credit for the 45 days you've already served. Impose mandatory court costs of 273, giving you a year to pay that. If you have 30 days to appeal the sentences that I've just imposed, if you want to appeal, your appeal has to be in writing. And if you cannot afford an attorney for those appeals, I can appoint one. Uh, now addressing the uh, loitering or prowling in violation of emergency order. How much time does he have in? Just one day? Two days. Two days? All right, Mr. Cabrera, if you wanted to resolve these cases today, I would... Uh, accept your pleas, adjudicate you guilty of these two misdemeanors, uh, credit you two days, impose court costs, and you'd be done with this. You have the option of uh, uh, entering a plea of not guilty, and uh, we'll set you for uh, a... Uh, so am I treating this as an arraignment or initial appearance? Just talking about the uh, bonds, correct? Yes, yeah, just the bonds, but okay. you can also plead out it. Okay. Um, so were you interested in resolving these cases today for time served and uh, court costs, or did you want to maintain I'd like to resolve it, sir. Okay. All right. Um, all the things I just said to you before, all the same, hasn't changed in the last 60 seconds? Yes, sir. All right. Um, all right, sir, I'm going to accept your pleas uh, to the charge of loitering or prowling. Uh, I'm going to accept your plea, uh, adjudicate you to be guilty of that offense, uh, sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for time, time served. Uh, I'm going to impose mandatory court costs, which should run $273. 
on the violation of emergency order during curfew. Uh, I'm going to accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, credit you two days' time served. Uh, this all under the same case number, so there's only one set of case, uh, uh, there's only one set of court costs. I give you up to a year to pay that off. Uh, sir, on this charge, you have 30 days to appeal. If you want to appeal, your appeal has to be in writing, and if you can afford an attorney for that appeal, I can appoint one. All right, Mr. Cabrera, good luck. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, is this John Oglesby? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Oglesby. Oglesby, you were arrested on the charge of driving under the influence to the extent your normal faculties were impaired. I'm going to find that uh, there's probable cause on that offense. Um, all right, so he was arrested yesterday. All right, appointed the public defender uh, to represent you. I'm going to stay the bond at $500. All right, good luck, sir. What's that? Rodney Grady. Yes, sir. All right, so Mr. Grady is here on a violation of probation. Sorry. It's the only VOP. He should have a new uh, also new. Okay, so this is an on uh, uh, fleeing attempt to a police officer driving a license has been revoked. All right, I'm going to find probable cause on the fleeing attempt to elude a police officer. I'm going to set by in the amount of $2,500. Driving a license suspended or revoked with knowledge, find probable cause, state the bond $500 on the uh, VOP. Uh, I'm going to um, state the bond at none. And there was also a first appearance detainer added, Your Honor, for an out of bond case um, it's for a 2019 CF 1198280, which is an ag with a firearm and a possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Okay. Am I missing that paperwork? It was at, it was at it just before court. It's 2019 uh, 11982 AO. All right. So that he was out on probation on he was on probation on that. Is that what no, he's out on bond. Out on bond. Yeah. All right. That bond should be revoked, Your Honor. as the defendant is out on bond and condition. All right. uh, I'm going to revoke the bond on, on the cases on which he was currently out on bond. He can take that up with the uh, judge that he has on that. So it's 119820? 119820AO. So I've revoked that bond, stayed the bond at none on the VOP, and set bond on the new law violation. Yes. All right, great. Thanks. Sean Henry. Sean Henry is here on a violation of probation. Going to stay the bond at none. Public defender is appointed. Manuel Osorio Arzate. Mr. Osorio Arzate is here in violation of probation for the original offense of grand theft. Second violation of probation on grand theft. Third violation of probation also on grand theft. Let's see, four, five. So I'm correct in understanding that he was on five concurrent probations all for grand theft. Is that right? All right, I'm going to stay the bonds at none on those offenses. Mr. Azario Azarte also was on probation for. Charges as the five VOPs, it's the officer get them as a home view. Gotcha. Okay. 
So by staying the bond at none on the violations of provision on the five grand thefts, does that cover it? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. He also have a new charge. He does. There it is. Possession of drug paraphernalia and providing false identification to law enforcement. Uh, I'm going to find probable cause. Stay the bonds at $500 and $100, respectively. And then, okay, that's the 2017. Okay, does that cover everything on Mr. Azario or, or Zaka? You'll let me know if I forgot. I have five VOPs and five on views in a new charge. Yeah. So the on views and the VOPs are, are redundant? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, good deal. Thank you. Okay, this doesn't look like a Daryl Bradshaw. This looks like a Jacqueline Arguello. Right, Mr. Arguello is charged with trafficking in heroin trafficking in fentanyl and possession of cocaine with intent to sell or deliver. Bonds are currently set at $100,000 on counts one and two and 15,000 on count three. Uh, Mr. Williams, do you have a, uh, anything to say as far as setting the bonds or conditions of release? This is on Arguello, Jacqueline Arguello, trafficking in heroin and uh, trafficking in fentanyl. Hi, right, you know, just, you know, um, this is where uh, Mr. Williams had a reason to why it was possible. All right, I'm going to set bond and count one in the amount of $10,000, count two $10,000, and count three $1,000. Daryl Bradshaw? Yes, sir. Mr. Bradshaw's here on a failure to appear on a possession of controlled substance. Okay. All right, so it appears that there are two case numbers. 2019 CF 1285 and 29 All right, I'm going to set bond in the amount of uh, $1,500 on um, 2019 CF 2779AO and $1,500 on 2019 CF 1285AO. David Chrisman. He's mental health, Jan. All right. Uh, the public defender has been appointed to represent Mr. Chrisman. I'm going to find probable cause. I'm going to set bond on the burglary to an occupied uh, structure in the amount of $2,500. Uh, criminal mischief uh, greater than $1,000 in the amount of $150. Joseph Drummond. Mr. Drum is charged with dealing in stolen property and receiving money from a pawnbroker through false verification of ownership. 
going to find probable cause. I'm going to set bond on the dealing with stolen property in the amount of $2,500. The receiving money uh, from a pawnbroker in the amount of $1,000. Agardo Francois. Mr. Francois is here on a charge of burglary to a structure and criminal mischief. He's also out on bond. I'm sorry, he was ROR on possession of cannabis with intent to sell or deliver. On the new charges of burglary to a structure and criminal mischief greater than $1,000, I'm going to find probable cause. I'm going to set bond in the amount of $2,000 on the burglary, $150 on the criminal mischief. Uh, There's no action on the out of bond case. I'm sorry? There's no action on the out of bond case. Okay. All right. I'll take no action on the out of bond. He'll remain ROR on that charge. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy Swanson. Hey, how are you doing, are you on? I'm doing well, sir. Well, you were here. Are, well, you, are, you, are you Alexander Glover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Glover, you are charged with, so this is a warrant on um, burglary to a conveyance. That is a warrant signed by Judge Apt. He has indicated this to be no bond. I'm going to keep that uh, at no bond and let Judge Apt address Mr. Glover. I'm also going to find probable cause based upon the warrant. Right. Yes, sir. Is Division 22 Judge Apt? No, it's just um, LeBlanc. Just LeBlanc. Just did the warrant. Just did the warrant? I'm sure that no one actually came through the initial hearing. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, let me take a look at this real quick. No, oh, I already looked at this. All right. I'm going to find probable cause. I'm going to sit bond in the amount of $5,000. Fine. 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 Andre Jenkins. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Right, back on Mr. Glover. Yes, yes, ma'am. He has two cases. It was $5,000 on each case. I'm sorry. There were two cases? Oh, I, have, I have two. You only got one. I have, tw oh. I have 2020 CF 4140AO. I also have 2020 CF 4058. Is that cool, sir? No bond. Do you have that one, Jackie? The court has 4140, and I have as well 4058. Do you, was that also um, a warrant? Yeah, the item. <laughs> <laughs> this is okay. the add-on. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, that's all right. What happened on the other one? Um, yes, he got five hundred. Oh, gosh, it looks like I'm clairvoyant. <laughs> I mean, it looks like let's just let's just keep it. At, it looks like that. Okay. All right, <laughs> that's reassuring. All right, Andre Jenkins. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Jenkins is charged with. Uh, petty theft with two prior convictions, also resisting an officer without violence. He's also out on ROR on the same charge. I'm going to find probable cause on the petty theft, stay the bond at $1,000. Resisting an officer without violence, stay the bond at $100. Um, State, did you have a position on the ROR? All right, I'll take no action on the ROR. Brandon Knox. Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Knox. Mr. Knox, you're charged with grand theft, third degree motor vehicle, loitering or prowling, and violation of emergency order or curfew. 
I'm going to find probable cause on each charge and set bond in the amount of 2500 on the grand theft uh, motor vehicle, $100 on the loitering and prowling, and uh, $100 on the violation of emergency order curfew. Um, yes, sir. Um, okay. All right. R O R the uh, violation and the bonds as indicated on the other two charges. Uh, uh, no, just on the violation. Okay. I set bond of the grand theft in uh, twenty five hundred, loitering the probably one hundred. Okay. All right. Derek Morales. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Mr. Morales is charged with possession of cannabis within a thousand feet of a convenience business with intent to sell. This was an arrest warrant signed by Judge Apps. Bond was set in the amount of a thousand dollars with a special condition of no return to the Ivy Lane Food Mart. I find probable cause. Uh, I'm going to stay the bond at a thousand. Jeremy Neely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Neely is charged with possession of meth, um, alprazolam, possession of meth, possession of alprazolam. I'm sorry. The first two are with intent. The second two are simple possessions, and then a fifth count of possession of less than 20 grams of marijuana. Uh, he was also out on bond on charges of grand theft, possession of meth, possession of less than 20 grams. Uh, I'm going to find probable cause on the new charges. On the possession of meth with intent, I'm going to set bond in the amount of $3,500. On the possession of Alprazolam with intent set bond in the amount of 150. Uh, the last, the, the remaining counts will be stayed 150, 150, and 100. So, Madam Clerk, I've just changed the bond on the original charging affidavit on the count, first count from 10 to 3500, and it's staying the other ones as is. State what's your position on the um, uh, out on bond. So if I got four hundred in my pocket, I'm on it. All right, I'll stay the uh, the the preceding bonds uh, as uh, as previously set. Zachary Russ. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Russ is charged with uh, uh, fraud by impersonating, uh, by using the, the idea of another person. I've reviewed the charging affidavit. I find probable cause. I'm going to stay the bond at $1,000. Mr. Russ was previously out on bond on the charge of grand theft third degree motor vehicle. That bond was in the amount of $1,000. State, do you have a position on that bond? No, Your Honor. All right. I'll stay the bond at a thousand dollars. I'll take no action on the previous charge on which he is currently out on bond. That's what I meant to say. But you knew that. Andrew Chico. All right, Mr. Chico is charged with petty theft. How much time does Mr. Chico we have in two days? Uh, State, do you have any? Uh, uh... No objection to a police adventure. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
All right, Mr. Ask for a reserve for restitution and no return. Okay. All right, Mr. Chico, you've got choices this morning, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, one choice is you currently uh, you currently are charged with petty theft, which is a second degree misdemeanor based upon the amount um, charged. One option that you've got is I will release you on your own recognizance. Yes, uh, sir. And you can return another day and contest that charge. If you want to resolve that charge today by entering a plea of no contest to the charge of petty theft, I'd accept a plea, adjudicate you to be guilty of that offense, sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for two days, reserve as to the amount of restitution, and require that you not return uh, to the Home Depot at 4404 Millennia Plaza Way. So my question for you, sir, is I will be yes, released sir. today? Yes, sir. Then You're going to be released today. Uh, you're going to be released today, Mr. I would Chico, like to take care of the charge and be released today. And be done with it? Okay. Yes. All right. All right. All right, Mr. Chico, you understand that you have the right to be presumed innocent of this charge. And if you wanted to, because um, I'm I would release you anyway, uh, you could um, uh, require the state to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt by coming back another day for a trial. You understand that? I understand completely, Your Honor. All right. Has anyone pressured you or forced you into this decision? No, Your Honor. Are you under the influence of alcohol or drugs today? No, Your Honor. You understand that if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could be deported by entering this plea? Yes, Your Honor. Has anyone threatened you or, or coerced you into entering this plea? No, Your Honor. Uh, all right, sir. I'm going to accept your plea of no contest to the charge of petty theft, a second for your misdemeanor. I'm going to adjudicate you to be guilty of that offense. I'm going to send you two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for the two days that you served. So as to this charge and this charge alone, you'll be released today. This is all you have. You're going to be released. I'm going to uh, order restitution reserve as to the amount for the light bulbs. I'm also going to require that you not return to the location where this occurred, uh, which is the Home Depot located at 4404 Millennia Plaza Way in Orange County, Florida. All right, sir, you have 30 days to appeal the sentence that I just imposed. If you want to appeal, your appeal has to be in writing. And if you cannot afford an attorney for that appeal, I can appoint you. All right? Yes, Your Honor. And you're going to need some fingerprints from Mr. Chico. Good luck, sir. Yes, thank you. Can you say the restitution for how long? 60 days. Kevin Clayton? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Clayton's charged with battery and resisting an officer without violence. I have uh, reviewed the charging affidavit. I find probable cause on both charges. I'm um, going to set bond on the battery in the amount of $500, the resisting charge in the amount of $100. Ricardo Mitchell. Your Honor, can I, may I please say one thing, Your Honor? Um, you, it is not in your best interest to say anything at this time. You, you, can, you, can, read, you, you can read on the affidavit that my brother was right there, and he, he witnessed that it didn't happen. Um, it, it, I, I didn't. I didn't do this, sir. Didn't okay, and I and I understand that, sir, and that's why I set bond for you to, to get out of jail. Um, I've appointed the public defender office to represent you. You follow up with their office. You're going to get paperwork as to when to return. I'm not going to be able to make a bond, sir. Please. Let me uh, let me I, have uh, have I, that back. I, I beg it. I beg of you. Sir. All right. So let's see. All right, so Mr. Clayton. This address, 1406 East Grant Street, is that where you live? Yes, sir. Who do you live there with? My mother, Barbara Clayton, and my father, the uh, Brian Theodore Clayton. Okay. Does Mr. Uh, uh, Clayton have any uh, priors, either state uh, or PTR? He does, Your Honor. He has two felony convictions, 16 misdemeanor convictions, one failure to appear, three of them. Okay, how, how long ago? Uh, last conviction was July of 2019. Okay. Does he qualify on this charge for pretrial release? He did not. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my original decision of setting bond in the amount of uh, 500 and 100, uh, Mr. Clayton. You've got a, a lawyer appointed. That lawyer can uh, can uh, file a motion on your behalf on another day. All right. Thanks, sir. Ricardo Mitchell. Yes, sir. Mr. Mitchell is charged with resisting an officer without violence. Uh, I've reviewed the charging affidavit. I'm going to find probable cause for the charge. Uh, I'm going to stay the bond at 500. Your Honor, I also had um, two, two more charges on there. 
Is that what you have, Madam Clerk? No. All right, Mr. Mitchell, I have a charge in 2020 MM 2430 of resisting an officer without violence. The clerk tells me that's all we have. Um, was it your understanding, Mr. Mitchell, that you had other charges on the same day, or did you have uh, charges yeah, from another out of, day? Out of county warrants. Out of county warrants. Yeah. So those are not okay. for me today? Yes, sir. Okay. Not Mr. Mitchell. Can you give us the only thing I got? And I have to do a whole new kind of order thing. Yeah, I have three out of county. Do we want to revisit, Mr. Mitchell? Do you want to take no action on those out of county warrants at this, at this time? If they're out of county warrants and he's here, I don't know whether they're going to transport them for the I mean, I just have to get the person in to pack up the orders because I can't okay. just sign them. Mm -hmm. What would be your preference, Madam Clerk? <laughs> I know what your preference would be, but what would you like me to do at this time? Well, okay. I mean, he has to be. We can do it again. I mean, we can go ahead and I just have the clerk in the office. But okay. you have to come back and then you just have to sign okay. up. But she has the out of county. This jacket did. Oh, thank you. All right. All right. So we have Broward County. Aggravated child abuse, no bond. Felony child abuse, no bond. Child abuse, no bond. We will extradite. Do you extradite? Oh, that's from out of, out of state. I was going to say, you don't extradite within state. All right. I'm going to stay those bonds at none. Those are out-of-county warrants, and we'll let the uh, the folks in Broward County address those cases. Mr. Mitchell, those have now been addressed, so they'll know what to do, uh, and we'll sign an order later this morning. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. All right, Kenneth Cardona. Mr. Cardona is here in charge of robbery. I read the charging affidavit. I find probable cause in the charge of robbery. I'm going to stay the bond at 5000 One second, Your Honor. He bonded, Your Honor. Oh, Mr. Cardona did. So the gentleman before me is Mr. Harvey? Nope. This is Mr. Varga. Mr. Mr. Varga. Okay. Harvey, um, can I, can you find it? What about Harvey? Harvey is here. Harvey is here. We don't. Unless you went to second Harvey. session already. Did I did I blow past first session into second session? Mr. Harvey's on second session, Your Honor. Okay. This is a reset from first session, Mr. Har uh, Varga. It's just for the out of county detainers to be addressed. Yes. I thought he was. Saying. Oh, was that the add-on? Is he from Seminole? Oh, oh he's uh, from Bay County. This is the one from Bay County. He's from, yes, Bay County. It should be the very last one. The very last one, okay. It should be. No? Varga, Dan. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Varga is here on an out of county warrant from, from Bay County, we say? Bay County. Yes. Uh, that warrant is a no bond. I'm going to stay the bond at no at none. Warrant is confirmed for theft. However, due to CB19, our jail facility is not accepting inmates at this time. We are unable to extradite on this warrant until health crisis subsides. If you are unable to arrest based on this, we understand, and we will advise as soon as we are able to begin accepting inmates. Mr. Varga has a no bond, but they're not going to come get him until. But so would uh, Judge Carter um, address those mm -hmm. the next day? She called the county and then she. It's something she do, so we just go ahead and do his arraignment, and then tomorrow she'll do it as a like an add on docket. To okay. Add on docket. So she'll be able to reach out to Bay County and yes. they'll decide whether um, they want Judge Carter to set a bond? Yes. Then that's what we'll do. And, and they say you have a what? Immigration hold. Okay. 
Okay, so am I taking no action or am I staying the bond at none? Staying the bond at none. Okay. And then let him know about it, the immigration. Okay, all right. All right, so Mr. Berg, you have an immigration hold, uh, which is preventing you from being released. You have a warrant out of Bay County with no bond. We're going to reset this for tomorrow on the Bay County warrant to see whether uh, they have objection to uh, the judge that will appear tomorrow setting you bond. But my understanding is with the hold, you'll not be going anywhere anyway. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have session two, and I have 1032. So what would you all like me to do? Do we take a break or we blow right into session two? Uh, courtroom. One session two, we keep going. Keep going. Yeah, Done. We don't, we don't stop until so it's a seamless change of sessions. Okay, I can do that. As long as I get lunch. I do get lunch, right? Okay, all right. One of my three favorite meals of the day. Okay. Um, so then, is this Mr. Harvey? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. All right, Mr. Harvey... Uh, was out on bond on the charges of shooting or throwing a missile into a dwelling or structure or vehicle and aggravated battery with a firearm. While out on bond, he was arrested on the charge of possession of a controlled substance without prescription and possession of, le of uh, less than 20 grams of marijuana. Uh, I've reviewed the charging affidavit. I'm going to find probable cause on the new charges. I'm going to stay the bonds on the uh, possession of drugs and the marijuana, $1,000 and $100, uh, respectively. Um, state, what's your position on the bond on which Mr. Harvey was originally released? Which no is objection, no action. The state has not made a charging decision. He was arrested October 28. Oh, okay. I will take no action on the... Uh, other charge. Then you should also have a Dwellis. Duh. Dwellis. Sit in this. Excuse me, Jack. Yeah. Excuse me. Hang on, hang on one second, Mr. Harvey, while I figure this out. Yes, sir. It's like a warrant. It's a traffic warrant for Dwellis. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that before. Yeah. $100. Look at that. Okay. Is that supposed to be a seal? Is that, is that a happy face? Or is it? That's weird, isn't it? All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, based upon the uh, uh, warrant. Signed by Judge Apt on the charge of driving license suspended revoked with knowledge. I'm going to um, uh, release you on your own recognizance. All right, thanks, sir. Can I say something? Uh, it's not going to make your situation any better, so I would say no. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Larn Larn uh, Larnaga. Am I missing a syllable? He refused court, Your Honor. Okay. Lauren Naga. I thought I was missing a syllable. All right. I'm appointing the public defender. I'm finding uh, Mr. Lauren Naga's probable cause on the charge of grand theft third degree and resisting an officer of violence on the state of bonds of $2,500 and $500. And he was out of bond, Your Honor? Oh, he was. That's why I have this goldenrod sheet. He was out on bond. He was out ROR on soliciting without a permit. Stating objection to my staying his ROR on the solicitor. All right. Next, I have uh, Hewler Moran. He bonded, Your Honor. All right. No need to take any action then on Mr. Moran. Took no action. He's already. This guy's already bonded. Okay. So no action on. No action on the uh, ROR. Any bonds Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, this guy. This guy bonded out. Okay. James Ragland. He's hospital, Your Honor. All right. Uh, well, the public defender's appointed on Mr. Ragland. I'm going to find probable cause and the stay the bonds as set in the charging affidavit uh, for the five counts. 
He was also out on ROR. I'm sorry, he's out on bond on possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, resisting an officer without violence, providing a false ID and an open container. No, there's no action. All right, I take no action. Am I going too fast? Just the right speed? Too slow? That's good. Okay. Daquan Woods. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Woods is charged with uh, possession of marijuana with intent to sell, manufacture, or deliver. Possession of a controlled substance without a prescription. Hey, excuse me. Excuse Probable cause is fine. Hold on, Mr. Woods. Hang on one second. Sorry. I'm gonna, and that's all right. Let me finish, and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, listen to what you have to tell me. I'll stay the bond at 1000 and 150 respectively. Mr. Woods was also out on bond uh, on the charge of grand theft, third degree motor vehicle. The point, public defenders appointed. Um, State, do you have a position on the uh, charge on which Mr. Woods was out on bond? All right, I'll take no action. And that bond will be stayed. All right, Mr. Woods, I've done all the things I need to do. Um, what you can say can't help you; it can only hurt you. Do you still want me to know something, or do you want to wait to talk to your lawyer? Uh, I was just—I just wanted to tell you that um, the one with the oh, the one with—I was trying to show him because it's on the paper. Oh. On the paper, it say that um, I was just charged with the marijuana. They tried to charge me with the other person charged, the one with no prescription, uh -huh. with the um, with the pills. That one supposed to go on my. Okay, Mr. Woods, I've I, I've done what I need to do this morning. I'm gonna have you direct your your uh, questions to your lawyer. I okay. Real nervous when they represent somebody that starts talking because we're all being recorded. You may some say something that's not gonna help you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Mario White? He bonded, Your Honor. All right, Mario White bonded. All right. Jose Acevedo Vasquez? Yes, correct. All right, sir, you're charged with trespass on property after warning. Looks like you've got two days in. Stating objection to uh, Mr. Uh, Acevedo Vasquez, uh, if I... Any objection to my sentencing to him to time served if he wants to resolve the case? No, we were operating withhold as well. Withhold, okay, all right. All right, so Mr. Acevedo Vasquez, you've got two choices. One is I'm, I would release you today. Uh, you would be responsible to come back to court. I show that we have don't have an address for you, so it would be your responsibility to come back and address this charge. Alternatively, if you want to uh, get out today and not have to come back, you could enter a plea of no contest to this charge. I would withhold conviction of guilt, sentence you to the two days in jail you've served, and then you wouldn't have to come back. So either way, I'm going to release you today. The question is, do you want to come back and, and address this charge and have the state prove that you committed the offense of trespass, or do you want to resolve it today and not have to come back? English? Uh, Spanish. Are you are you are you thinking or are you not understanding? No, I understand. Uh, I understand. Okay. All right. Can we obtain? Uh, do we have um, interpreter cases later, or do we? Yeah, at twelve. At twelve. Can we recall Mr. Acevedo Vasquez? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's recall him at twelve, and we'll address whether he wants to resolve his case. Okay. You want me to give you that, and you give yes. it back to me? All right. Cool. Christopher Clements. He's mental health, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Clements is charged with trespass. After warning, I've reviewed the charging affidavit. I'm going to find probable cause. Uh, I'm going to. Um, all right. He is transient. Uh, can we recall this tomorrow and maybe he can resolve the case? I'm going to stay the bond at 500. If he comes back tomorrow, he may be able to resolve the case. Okay. Yes, can we do that? Mm -hmm. All right, because that may resolve it. Uh, all right, uh, Shaquan Roberts. Bond, Your Honor. Mr. Roberts is bonded. Esau Robinson. Bond, also. All right. 
And I am out of papers. Okay. Who do you have? Who do you have standing there, sir? Mr. Matthews, he's here for a status hearing, Your Honor. Out of county status. No, nope, I don't have that. <laughs> we we've done pretty well this morning, except for that. What what would you all like me to do with him? So it says, according to the note and add-on, defendant to be reset in court for it's a Summa County case. Oh, I know about this the one. Thousand dollars, Judge Rex Seitler. Yes, the arraignment date is May the twenty sixth, twenty twenty, at nine a.m. I did I did see that add-on, but I didn't have paper. Uh, so what I'm doing is on that charge, uh, I am setting bond in the amount of thousand dollars. Paperwork will uh, tell you when to return in Seminole County. It's May 26, 2020 at 9 a.m. May, May 26 at 9 a.m. in front of Judge Rex Seitler. Yes, sir. Yes. And this and gentle, uh, sir, your name is Andrew Matthews. Matthews. I can pull it up. I, I think Miss Kenny Swanson is going to beat me to it, but um, no, actually, in the notes section, does not have the case. All right, I was sent. Uh, I was sent a, an add-on. Bear with me one minute, and let me okay. see if I can. Add-on docket. Here it is. Mitchell. Give me Mitchell five nine three five. One nine three five eight one eight eight. Okay, Eddie, don't send me your file down because I need to type out some. It's out of county orders. Okay, okay. Okay. All right, Madam Clerk, I have uh, Andrew Matthews. Okay. I have a date of birth. I don't have a case number from. Um, uh, she, she You've got it? Okay. At a thousand. Uh, and the uh, arraignment date is 526 at 9 a.m. And that will be in, in front of Judge Rex Seitler in Seminole County. I don't have a I don't have a courtroom. I used to May 20th arraignment date. May 26th. 26. Okay. I don't have a time now, but it just said May 26th. At 9. Okay. All right. All right. So we now have Dion Norfleet. Uh, granted, Your Honor, the state filed a notice of non filing before the 33rd day. All right. That has been no no info then. No, no, notice of non filing before the 33rd day. We have not made a charge in the city. Gotcha. All right. So I'll sign that order. Releasing Mr. That is a, quite a different thing than a no information. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> All right. Then we have uh, Corey Eugene Hall. That should be denied. The state filed an information and request to transfer from Bellevue to misdemeanor on 331. Okay. Peter Antonio. Dimitru Woods. That should be granted the state trial for those of non filing before the 33rd day. I've never heard of a notice of non filing. Is that a new thing? No. no. I just just because I haven't heard it doesn't mean it hasn't been there. Uh, Giuseppe Carbone Cologne. That should be granted the state trial for those of non filing before the 33rd day. Amanda Marrero. That should be granted the state trial of notice of non filing before the 33rd day. You're making my job so easy. Of course, I shouldn't say that until we're done. <laughs> making my job easy so far. David Harvey. That should be denied the state trial of information and request to transfer from felony to misdemeanor on 330. And that's all I have. Okay. Andrew Chico. Okay. Uh, it's only because I had a Okay. <laughs> now this is so now we will recess and let them know. I guess they were okay. recorded, but we said that we'll be returned. How long do you think it takes you to read the?
<laughs> um, do you want to you want to shoot for how many are there? Do you know? Oh, that's it. That's it. Um, you start at twelve. They say twelve. If, if, they half, say twelve. Yes. What would would twelve? Yeah. That's a good idea. Oh, they've been noticed to be here. Yeah. Yes. Let's let's do twelve. Okay. All right. I brought work with me, so I can do this, and then I can finish my order. Okay. All right. Anything else before we are in recess? No. That's it. Yeah. Okay, all right. See y'all back at noon. Now, what do I touch? There's an end call here. Don't, 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 touch, don't touch anything. Touch. For interpreter, your honor, the interpreter has not been sworn in yet today. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, ma'am. Uh, clerk, can you swear uh, interpreter Morales, please? Yes. Can you raise your right hand, please? Did you, do you solemnly swear to translate from Spanish to English, from English to Spanish, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, to the best of your ability? I do. Carlos Morales, State Certified Spanish Court Interpreter. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Morales. Uh, what are we, who are we doing first, Madam Clerk? Um, one of the Spanish interpreters. Can I swear all of them? Absolutely. We usually have everybody live. That's a good idea. All right. Uh, everyone that, that is in need of, uh, well, everyone, you can swear everybody? Or okay, just the Spanish sorry. folks? All right. Um, could you please rise to be sworn, please? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, so help you by Are they hearing anything in there? They can hear. Yes. They can hear? Okay. All right. Good. All right. So we have Mr. Acevedo Vasquez left over from this morning. Are we going to pass him to do until the end of the DV cases? Yes. Um, should start with Okay. All right, this guy was left over, uh, so we'll, exactly. let me not forget. Right, let me not forget him. No problem. Okay. okay. Um, all right, so we have Jonathan Mejia. Your Honor, <clears throat> can um, can we try using the headphones? I think this time they are working. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Mejia is charged with possession of cannabis with in intent to sell or deliver, possession of less than 20 grams of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I find probable cause. A public defender has been appointed. I'm going to stay the bonds as indicated in the arrest affidavit at $1,000 on count one. One hundred dollars on count two and one hundred dollars on count three. Thank you, Mr. Mejia. Thank you, Judge. Um, Your Honor, can the interpreter get the case numbers if there are any, please? Absolutely. Twenty twenty CF four one nine five. All right, next we have uh, Pedro Juan Melendez Opio. Mr. Melendez Op Opio is charged with trafficking in heroin, trafficking in fentanyl, and possession of cocaine with intent to deliver. I've reviewed the charging affidavit. He's also charged with driving while license suspended or revoked with knowledge. As to the, uh, I've reviewed the charging affidavits. I find probable cause. I'm uh, setting bond in the trafficking charge in the amount of $10,000. Charge of uh, trafficking in heroin, $10,000. Trafficking in fentanyl, $10,000. And possession of cocaine with intent to sell or deliver in the amount of $1,500. I'm also staying the bond on the driving license suspender revoked with knowledge at five hundred dollars. Thank you, sir. What do you mean it says? I didn't hear it. All right, is the defendant indicating that he didn't hear what I said?
Uh, I didn't hear anything of what you said. Okay. Okay. You make certain he can hear me. Okay. I'm sorry, Arthur. The interpreter just asked the defendant. He can't hear the interpreter. Oh, he can't hear the interpreter. He Hearing can. Me, can. He, he can. Can he hear me? It's more important that he can hear you because I don't speak Spanish. Yes, I didn't understand the Spanish portion. Because it cut out. Okay. Uh, can you hear the interpreter now? Yes, correctly. All right. Um, for Mr. Melendez Opio's benefit, I'll repeat that I'm finding probable cause. I'm setting bonds in the amount of 10000 10000 and 1500 and five hundred dollars on the driving while license suspended revoked. I've appointed the public defender's office to represent Mr. Melendez Opio. Okay. All right. Thank you. I would assume you want me to sign these as we go. Um, some of these are not signed. What? Yeah, you missed them. That's okay. Oh. I thought I was on it. All right, next we have Eric Santos Bonet. Mr. Santos Bonet is charged with possession of heroin, possession of cocaine, tampering with physical evidence, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I find probable cause. I'm staying the bond amounts as contained in the original arrest affidavit at 1,000 for count one, 150 for counts two and three, and 100 for count four. Thank you, sir. Uh, and next, have, sorry, have what an, is the, the, the case number, please? Yeah, case number? 2020 CF 4175. Thank you. Next, I have Orlando Aguilar Call. This is an immigration detainer. Uh, Madam Clerk, what is it that I'm to tell Mr. Aguilar Call? He's the surviving defendant of his immigration detainer. That's okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right, Mr. Uh, uh, Aguilar Kyle, you have an immigration detainer, so you will not be leaving the jail until they come get you on the on the immigration detainer. Okay. Did I miss that too? I think those might have been the paper clip. Ah, we'll, we'll go with that. Leonardo Gonzalez. Yes, we're so wrong. Mr. Gonzalez is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He was, uh, at, at this time, he is out on release on his own recognizance on the charge of criminal mischief. And also out on his own recognizance on a charge of trespass and resisting an officer without violence. On the new charge of aggravated uh, assault with a deadly weapon, I'm finding probable cause. I'm setting bond in the amount of $1,000. State, do you want to be heard on the RR conditions on the um, two felonies? No All right, I'll take no action on uh, 20 CF 4199, for which Mr. Gonzalez is currently out, out on their own recognizance. I'm sorry, Your Honor, did Your Honor say out on bond or ROR? ROR. And then before we move to the... Um, 
DV cases. Do we have Mr. Acevedo Vasquez back? No, I don't think he's not done. He's fit. Come on, it's right here. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come Welcome back, Mr. Uh, Acevedo Vasquez. I got him right here. Okay. Sir, you are currently charged with trespass on property after warning. That is a misdemeanor. Uh, you have choices this afternoon, sir. Um, I will release you on your own recognizance, but you will be responsible to return to address this charge on another day. Failure to return will result in your being uh, a warrant being issued for your arrest. If you want to resolve this case today by giving up your right to be presumed innocent, you can enter a plea of no contest to that charge. Ms. Kennedy Swanson, is this the one that you recommended a withhold? Yes, Your Honor. I would withhold conviction of guilt, sentence you to the two days you've already served in jail. And you also will be released today, but you won't have to come back to address this charge. So of those two things, which would you rather do, sir? Do you want to resolve it today or come back another day to contest the accusations against you? So if I want to resolve it today, you're saying that I would have to plead guilty and the charges would remain? Um, if you want to resolve it today, you can enter a plea of no contest, which indicates that you are not admitting guilt but not contesting the accusation against you. I would withhold formal conviction of guilt. It would appear on your record but not as a conviction. I would give you credit for the two days you've served in the Orange County Jail. Court costs would run $273, for which I'd give you up to a year to pay. But what uh, remains on uh, the uh, record, would that affect me work-wise? I cannot answer that question other than to advise you that it would be on your record as a withhold of conviction. If you're not a U.S. citizen, you could be deported, and it may be, affect your ability to work. I do not know. Mr. Acevedo Vesquez, if you are uncertain as to what to do, um, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance, and that will give you an opportunity to consult with your public defender. And that lawyer may be able to answer the, the questions that you have and direct you as to how to resolve your case on another day. It does not matter to me. If you want to resolve it today, you can also enter a plea. All right, I'll resolve it today. All right. All right, sir. I understand that you want to enter a plea of no contest. This charge is trespass on property after warning. Uh, has anyone pressured you or forced you against your will to enter this plea of no contest? No, no. Pero la, 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 la pregunta mía es... ¿Por qué a mí me sometieron a este cargo? Eh, porque yo no hice nada malo. Yo simplemente estaba esperando la, la, la guagua, la estación, y la guagua, yo estaba cansado y la guagua se me fue. Y entonces, cuando regresó la otra, yo eh, decidí coger la guagua. Él me dijo que no, que vino con un, un vehículo, ¿verdad? Y me dijo que me moviera y me, que me iba a dar un cargo. Yo le dije, ves que necesito coger la guagua. Para, para yo ir a donde estoy viviendo, que era en, en, en Kisim. Y me dijo que no, y me dio un papel. ¿Por qué me dan algo si yo no he hecho nada? 
Okay. Well, I want to know uh, why did I get this charge when I haven't done anything wrong? I mean, I was waiting for the bus. I was tired and I missed that bus. So I had to wait for the other one to arrive. And when the other one arrived, I wanted to take that one. But uh, he told me no. Uh, and came with a vehicle for me to move. And if I didn't move, that there would be charges. Mr. And Mr. Mr. Acevedo him, Vasquez, mm -hmm. um, you have a lawyer who is advising you not to say anything more about this case. No. It appears as though you may have some defenses no, no. to this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to release you on your own recognizance to return on another day. Your paperwork will tell you the date, time, and location to return. We currently ha have on your paperwork that you do not have a permanent residence. You're going to want to be uh, very careful to be certain that you follow up with your lawyer, your assistant public defender, and also that you don't miss your court dates to avoid uh, having a warrant issued for your arrest. Thank you, sir. Estoy esperando. No tengo dinero y no tengo guagua porque la guagua me prohibieron. Thank you, sir. Okay, so... Is there a case number for that case? There is... That case number is Mr. Acevedo Vasquez, 2020-MM-2454-AO. 2020 okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So, do we, Madam Clerk, do we have any more uh, Spanish interpreter cases? That's it. Uh, may, may the interpreter be released with our thanks? Thank you, Mr. Morales. You're welcome, Judge. Have a good afternoon. You as well, sir. Thank you. Next, I have Rodney Hayes. Now I have Rodney Hayes. Mr. Hayes is charged with uh, battery by strangulation, aggravated assault with a battery, and battery domestic violence. Do we have anybody uh, here uh, that wishes to address the court on Mr. Hayes? Okay, this was a warrant signed by Judge Wooten. I have reviewed the warrant and I find probable cause. Uh, does Mr. Hayes reside at the same location as uh, Ms. Elliott? No, sir. Okay. Yes, for no contact order, no return or maintenance at the residences. Okay. Um, any, any, uh, any other cons uh, concerns regarding uh, amount of bond? No, yeah, we're the court discretion. We also ask for no weapons or firearms. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Hayes, I find probable cause. I'm going to set bond in, in the, on the battery by strangulation in the amount of $1,000. Uh, the aggravated assault with the battery at $100 and the battery domestic violence at $100. I'm going to require that you have no contact directly or indirectly with Ms. Alexis Elliott. You're to maintain separate residence. You're not to return to the residence where this occurred on Rio Grande Avenue. You're to possess no firearms, weapons. You're not to consume any alcohol uh, or uh, possess any uh, not uh, prescribed medication or illegal substances. Ms. Kennedy Swanson, anything else? No, you're right. All right, thank you. Sarah Baca? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. All right, All right. Ms. Baca is charged with battery domestic violence. Do we have anyone that wants to address the court on her case? Seeing none, I've reviewed the charging affidavit. I'm going to find a probable cause. I'm going to release Ms. Baca on her own recognizance. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome, Ms. Bach. I am going to require that you... Um, do you and Mr. Hemmerly share a residence? Yes, we do, sir. The, the home is in my, my name. Okay. Um, I'm going to order that you maintain separate residences. Um, if that means that Mr. Hemmerly leaves that residence, you can return to that residence, but you can't be there at the same time. 
Uh, if Mr. Hemerly will not leave the residence, that means you can't go back there except for one time with law enforcement um, to collect personal effects. You're to have no um, no. Is there any reason for you to have contact with Mr. Hemerly? Yes, sir. Um, you have a child together. We have two children together, and Your Honor, you know this really was a misunderstanding. Yeah, let me stop. Let me yes, stop you right there. I apologize. Uh, that's okay. It's no need to apologize. You've been appointed a public defender. Lawyers get very nervous when their clients start saying things on the record that may be used against them at a later time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to require that you have no hostile contact with Mr. Hemmerly. Yes, sir. Is there any way that there's a third party that can have no contact but through a third party for child custody and child visitation? Uh, Ms. Baca, do you have someone else that can... Uh, no, no, Your Honor. Neither no. of us. You don't have any parents or siblings or friends or coworkers? No, sir. Okay. In that case, we have access to our PTR in this way. If something happens, then the victim has a way to reach out to PTR and have provided it. All right. Um, Madam P PTR, uh, does uh, Ms. Baca qualify for pretrial release? I'm sorry, I did not hear you. She does? All right. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that, Ms. Baca. You're still going to get out today. It's going to take a little longer. You need to go through some paperwork with the pretrial release folks. It's extraordinarily important that you that when you uh, meet with pretrial release, you ask every question that you have of what's expected of you. There'll be a requirement that you report back with them periodically. If you fail to report to them, uh, this will go back to the judge that the case is assigned to, who may revoke your pretrial release, and you'll have a warrant issued for your arrest. It's different than ROR. I know these are letters and ROR and PTR and all the R's, but you need to be very careful that you understand what you can and cannot do on pretrial release. Um, I am going to uh, release you on your pretrial release. I'm going to require that you maintain separate residences. You can go back one time to collect personal effects. You're to have no hostile contact with Mr. Hemmerly. Um, I'm so sorry, Your Honor. Sure. Um, are you saying that I am not or I, that I am able to have contact with Mr. Hemmerly? You can have contact, but no hostile No contact. hostile. That will not be a problem, Your Honor. Okay. So let me just explain to you just real briefly. Okay. I have jurisdiction over you, not Mr. Hemmerly. So anything that he may perceive as hostile uh, would result in him contacting law enforcement, who will contact your pretrial release officer, and they'll revoke your PTR. So, you, so if, if you have any contact with him that you sense he feels is being hostile, you're going to want to leave him immediately and... and uh, return to a neutral location so that you don't uh, have an accusation that you've behaved hostily toward him. All there right? will not be any uh, issues, okay. Your Honor. All right. Um, also going to require that you not consume any uh, alcohol or any non-prescribed medication uh, and that you're not to possess any firearms or weapons. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Ms. Kenny Swanson, anything I've overlooked? All right. Good luck, Ms. Baca. Uh, Your Honor, I do have one more question. Is by chance this going to be showing on my record at all? Um, right now you've been arrested but not yet charged, and your uh, public defender can answer all your questions. Yes. Okay? Your Honor, right, thank you. you very much, and please be safe and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Ms. Baca. I'm sorry, case number? For that. Each of the cases. The court reporter. Oh, okay. All right. You want to be sure we're doing this right. 2020 MM 2457AO. We'll do that all morning. All right. Mr. Bogle? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Bogle, you're charged with uh, domestic violence battery. I think that we have a witness here. Uh, are, are you Miss uh, Quiroga? Okay. Uh, and Ms. Kuroga, you've already been sworn? Yes. All right. Mr. Uh, Mr. Bogle is, is here having been charged with the offense of battery domestic violence. You've been identified as the victim in that case. It's my job to determine whether there's probable cause that exists to go forward on this charge. I find there is probable cause. My next job is to determine conditions of release. Um, is there anything you want me to know uh, before I determine uh, whether to permit Mr. Bogle to return to the, if you share a residence or have contact with you, is there anything you want me to know? Can you, stay quiet, you may. Are you afraid of Mr. Bogle? Would you like to have contact with him while this case is pending? 
If something happened in the future, would you feel comfortable in calling the police or 911? Has anything like this happened in the past? I'm sorry. Were drugs or alcohol related to this incident? Um, were there any minor children present during this incident? No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Uh, defense, do you have any questions of, uh, uh, of the witness? No. Um, State, do you have a recommendation on conditions of release? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. No objection to no hostile contact. We'd ask for no drugs or no alcohol. We'd also ask um, for PTR as he qualifies for it. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, all right, Mr. Bogle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to release you on pretrial release. Um, you may return. Do you, you and, and uh, uh, Ms. Quiroga, do you, you share a residence? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I understand from Ms. Quiroga that she does not object to your returning to that residence, but I'm going to order that you not have any hostile contact. What that means is I have jurisdiction over you. I do not have jurisdiction over uh, Ms. Quiroga. So should, you, should she feel as though you're behaving in a hostile way, all she needs to do is contact your pretrial release officer or call the police your release conditions will be revoked and you'll be back in jail. So it's very important that you be extraordinarily careful. I'm required that so I'm releasing you to pretrial release. You'll meet with a pretrial release officer that will explain all the conditions that go with pretrial release. I'm going to require you have no hostile contact uh, with the victim in this case, that you not consume uh, any alcohol or drugs for which you do not have a prescription, um, and you may return to the residence that you share. Anything else, uh, State? There's no firearms, whatever. Oh, that's, uh, no firearms or weapons. All yes, right. sir. All right, good luck, Mr. Bogle. Thank you very Mr. much. Thank you. Thank you. That case number is 2020 MM2462 AO. Jorge Calderon. Yes, sir. Clavijo. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Uh, Calderon Clavijo, Clavijo, you are charged with domestic violence battery. It appears that we have a witness here. Uh, I'm, uh, for the record, finding, based upon reading of the charging affidavit, there's probable cause for the charge of domestic violence battery. Before I set conditions of release state, did you want to uh, inquire uh, of... Anna, Anna Rosario Pleats, Pleats, Plates? Pleates. 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 Got it wrong. Uh, uh, State, would you like to inquire of Ms. Pleates? Yes. Ms. Pleates, are you afraid of the defendant? No, ma'am. Would you like to have contact with him or him to be allowed to have contact with you while the case is pending? Yes, ma'am. If something happened in the future, would you feel comfortable in calling the police or 911? Yes, ma'am. Has anything like this happened in the past? Yes, ma'am. And at that point, did you call the police? No, uh, the police were called and I was arrested, ma'am. Okay. And were drugs or alcohol involved in this situation? No, ma'am. No further questions. All right, defense, any questions of Ms. Pleates? Sure. Sure, uh, state, what are your, what's your recommendation for conditions? State request PTR, Your Honor, no hostile contact, no drugs, no firearms, no weapons. Okay. okay. Um, Ms. Pleates, do you have any objection to... Uh, Mr. Calderon Clavijo returning to, to the to the, uh, the residence. Yes, sir. And you, you live in that residence together, right? Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Having previously found probable cause, Ms. Calderon Clavijo, I'm going to release you on pretrial release. It's very important that when you talk to pretrial release, you understand what the conditions are, so you don't violate those. I'm going to require, as a condition of your release, that you not have any hostile contact with Ms. Pletes. What that means is that. Um, uh, should you feel that she feels as though you're behaving in a hostile way that you uh, retreat, I have jurisdiction over you, not over her. So you're not to have any hostile contact. If she perceives you're being hostile, she can call uh, law enforcement and you can have your conditions of release uh, revoked. In order that you not possess any firearms or weapons, uh, that you not consume any alcohol or uh, drugs for which you do not have a prescription. Um, All right, I think that's it. Uh, for the court reporter, that case number is 2020-MM2458-AO. Ms. Pletes, thank you very much for your attendance today. Thank you. Are those the only witnesses we have? Next, I have John Chase. Mr. Chase is charged with battery domestic violence.
Um, I uh, have reviewed the, uh, the uh, charging affidavit and find probable cause for the charge. Um, uh, I'm going to release uh, Mr. Chase ROR. Um, State, do you have a recommendation? Apparently, according to the charging affidavit, Mr. Chase um, and the victim in this case reside together in a car. We'd ask for no contact with the victim, maintain separate residences wherever that looks like. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna release. Uh, I'm gonna release Mr. Chase on his own recognizance. I'm gonna order that he have no contact directly or indirectly uh, with the victim of this case, whose name is uh, Natoya Tulloch, T-U-L-L-O-C-H. Um, Mr. Uh, Chase is not to consume any alcohol nor is he to consume any uh, medication or, or drugs for which he does not have a prescription. He's not to have any firearms or weapons. And as I said, no contact directly or indirectly with the victim. Good luck, Mr. Chase. Victor Given. Mr. Given is charged with battery domestic violence and assault domestic violence. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I find probable cause. I'm going to release uh, Mr. Given uh, on zone recognizance. I'm going to require that he have no contact directly or indirectly. Your Honor, he qualifies for PCR. He does? State? We request PCR, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Mr. Given, do you have any need to have any uh, further contact uh, with Jackie Pena? What do you think? What do you think? Do you have any uh, need to have contact with Ms. Pena? I'd like to. Okay. Well, the question is, I don't know if she wants to have contact with you. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to release you uh, on pretrial release. Um, State, Mr. Given doesn't currently have an address. Is that going to create a problem for pretrial release? Right now, we're going to telephone court. So I'm going to require them to report within... Okay, so he can be successful on pretrial release so long as he can contact you all by phone? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Given, I'm going to release you on pretrial release. Uh, that is different than releasing you on your own recognizance. That means there are rules that you have to follow. It's very important that you follow those rules and you understand those rules. Be certain you ask all the questions you have so you don't, by accident, not do what you're supposed to do. I'm going to require that you have no hostile, I'm going to require that you have no hostile contact uh, with Ms. Pena. Um, what that means is you can have contact with her, but should she feel as though your contact is hostile, all she's got to do is contact the police or pretrial release and your conditions will be revoked and you'll be find yourself back in jail. All right. Yes, um, you might also find your uh, self uh, sprayed with pepper spray, it appears. Um, so I'm going to release you PTR. No hostile contact, no drugs or alcohol, no firearms, um, and no return to this location. Uh, it looks as though this was. Do you all, do you all share uh, residence at 537 West Jackson? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. For the time being, uh, Mr. Given, I'm going to require the, that you maintain separate residences. Yeah. Um, you're, you're entitled to go back one time to collect your personal effects, um, and then you can bring that up uh, at a later time if you want to change those conditions of release. But right now, no hostile contact and maintain separate residences. All right? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Good luck. Do we have another witness, or was that somebody just had a question? I guess we'll find out. Willie Lee House? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. House, you're charged with battery domestic violence. I've reviewed the charging affidavit. I find probable cause. Um, State, do you want to be heard on conditions of release? 
Yes, Your Honor, we'd ask for no contact, um, maintain separate residences, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons, no firearms. Do we know why he didn't call Dr. Petier? Because in his previous history, he has the weapon, Your Honor, we request a bond amount, not just our rise to this criminal history. Your Honor, his victim is here. Okay, is she likely to uh, come back by the time I finish the sentence, or should we pass her for a moment? Okay, let's just pass this case just for a moment, and we'll come back to it. Ruthina uh, Stokes King. Uh, Ms. Stokes King is charged with battery domestic violence. I've reviewed the charging affidavit. Uh, I find there's probable cause. I'm going to find probable cause on the charge of domestic violence. This is a mother-daughter uh, domestic violence case. Um, I don't see that we have uh, the daughter, uh, uh, Miss uh, uh, Kiana King here. State, do you want to be heard on conditions of release on Ms. Uh, Stokes King? We want no contact, separate residences, no weapons, no firearms, no drugs or alcohol. And is her reason because of the criminal history for Washington? Yes. Okay. And we asked for uh, a reasonable bond amount. Right. All right. I'm going to release uh, Ms. Stokes King on her own recognizance. I'm going to require that she have no contact directly or indirectly with the uh, alleged victim in this case, Kiana Ashante Lachey King. Um, uh, Ms. Stokes King, uh, do you share a residence with your daughter? Yes, sir, I do, and I have nowhere okay. to go. Okay. Is that your residence, her residence, or do you share the residence? No, no, that's my house. That's my house. She lives with me. Okay. All right. Um, what I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to order that you not have any, any uh, contact with your daughter, uh, and I'm going to require that you maintain separate residences. That's going to mean for the time being, you're going to need to find someplace else to go. If she moves out, you can move back in. You can have access to your house, but if she won't leave, then you're going to have to find other places to live until you can um, take other actions to get back in your house that are beyond what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to release you on their own recognizance. Hang on a second, Ms. Stokes King. Okay. So I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. You don't have to post any money or report back to anyone. I'm going to require you have no contact directly or indirectly of any kind with your daughter. If she contacts you, I have jurisdiction over you, but not her. So if she contacts you and invites you to come over so you can talk this all thing th through, you don't want to do that because right. I'm ordered you have no contact directly or indirectly with her. You're also to consume no alcohol or drugs for which you don't have a prescription. You're not to have any weapons or firearms. You're to maintain separate residences, as I said a moment ago. Um, I've appointed the public defender's office to represent you. It is not going to be in your best interest to say anything about the facts surrounding this case. Um, you can talk with your lawyer and find out how best to address this. And if I haven't already mentioned it, you can go back one time to collect your personal, some personal facts. Did you have a question for me other than telling me what happened? Um, no, um, I well, I, I do want to ask you one question, Your Honor. I, I did yes, hear you say that um, I can take measures in my own hands as far as getting her out of my home. What I told you is you shouldn't take matters into your own hands, but you can talk with folks to figure out how how to how to. I'm requiring only that you maintain separate residences, um, and until she leaves, you can't go back there. It's up to you to figure out if if you want her to leave and she doesn't want to leave uh, what steps you can take so I you're going to want to do that within the law you're not going to want to that's what i'm saying within the law yes sir that's what i'm saying exactly. okay yes sir okay no problem okay. as long as we understand that okay okay all right Ms. stokes King. good luck okay thank you uh, i mean your Honor. you're welcome all right that case number is 2020 mm 2459 ao we have the uh, witness on mr house Is this Miss Allen? Yes. 
All right, Ms. Allen, uh, Madam Clerk, would you go ahead and swear Ms. Allen? I don't think she was here earlier. Raise your right hand. Please follow me swearing affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truthful and truthful of God. I do. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Tell me your name, please. Aisha Mishra's Allen. All right. Ms. Allen, uh, I have found, based upon the charging affidavit, that there is probable cause uh, to uh, proceed on the charges against Willie Lee House Jr. Um, you have been identified as the victim of this domestic violence. So before I determine what are the appropriate conditions of release, you have an opportunity to let me know what you want me to know. I'm going to ask the state to ask you some questions for my benefit. Listen to her questions and answer those to the best of your ability, okay? All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Allen. Are you afraid of Mr. House? I am not afraid. Would you like to have, or would you like him to have contact with you while this case is pending? I do. Do the two of you live together? We do. Would you like for him to be allowed to continue to live with you while this case is pending? I do. Were drugs or alcohol related to this incident? It was not. Were there any minor children present present when this incident happened? It was. Caden was. Are you afraid um, that Mr. House will be violent again in front of the minor child? I don't think so. If I can speak or, or kind of. So this is not the time to talk about the facts okay. of the case. You will be contacted by the state attorney's office um, in a future date to be able to talk about the facts of your case. Um, if the judge allows you to, uh, excuse me, allows Mr. House to live with you, would you call 911 or call the police if something happened in the future? I would not. You will not. I would not. And if I can suggest it, um, with the judge, as far as like, um, as far as like counseling or, or some type of like anger management or something like that, that would kind of guide him. But as far as me being afraid, anything like that, I'm not afraid. So I ask you the question again, if something happened in the future where he got violent with you or in front of the minor child, would you feel comfortable calling the police or not? I would if it, it was if if it was an extreme emergency or something happened in that that nature, I would definitely call. But if I'm in fear of my life or anything, but this particular case, I wasn't in fear of my life. No further questions, John. All right. Um, did you want to be heard on conditions of release date? We'll leave contact in, your, in the court's discretion, Your Honor. We okay. ask that Your Honor set a bond. No drugs, no alcohol, no weapons, no firearms. Okay. All right. I've reviewed the charging affidavit. We've taken testimony from Ms. Allen. Um, as I said earlier, I'm finding probable cause. I'm going to release Mr. Um, House on his own recognizance. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. House. Uh, I'm releasing yes, you on your own recognizance. I'm permitting you to return to the home that you reside in yes, sir. Uh, with, with uh, Ms. Allen and the child. Um, it is very important. I'm also going to order that you not have any hostile contact with her. Yes, you may sir. have heard me explain this to other folks or maybe not. I have jurisdiction over you, but not over Ms. Allen. So should she feel as though your behavior is hostile, she's going to call the police. The, you'll get arrested and your conditions of, of release on this charge may be revoked. Yes, sir. So you're going to want to be very careful that should tempers uh, uh, flare up that you remove yourself from that situation. Yes, All sir. Right? Uh, I'm going to require that you not consume any alcohol or uh, possess or consume any drugs for which you don't have a prescription, no firearms or weapons. Yes, sir. Uh, and um, I think that will take care of that. That case number is 2020 mm 2434AO. Good luck. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Okay. We will. Thank you. Okay. The, the, the judge. Jose Villatoro. Yes, Mr. Villat Mr. Villatoro is charged with battery domestic violence. I've reviewed the uh, charging affidavit. I find probable cause. Um, State, do you want to be heard on conditions of release? Your Honor, we ask for no contact with the victim, maintaining several residences, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons, no firearms, and PCR. Okay. Uh, Mr. Villatoro, do you share a residence uh, with the victim in this case? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Okay. And that's uh, that's Ms. Uh, Janice Morales Vivas? Yes. 
All right, um, I'm going to release uh, uh, Mr. Villatoro ROR. Uh, I'm going to require that he maintain separate residence from. Um, yeah, I mean, he qualifies for PTR. He does qualify for PTR. All right, I'm going to release him PTR. Uh, what that means for you, Mr. Villatoro, uh, is that you are, uh, before you are released, you're going to check in with the pretrial release folks. They're going to explain to you how this works. There's conditions that you need to file. You want to make certain you file those conditions to avoid having your conditions of release being revoked and you find yourself back in jail. All right? It's a little more complicated than just releasing one in your own cognizance. Uh, I'm going to order that you have no, uh, no contact directly or indirectly with the alleged victim in this case. Uh, that person being, uh, I just had her name here, Janice Morales Vivas. Um, you can return to the, you're to maintain separate residences. You can return to the residence that you share on one occasion to collect personal effects. Uh, you're not to consume any alcohol or drugs for which you don't have a prescription, no firearms or weapons. All right. All right, that case number is 2020MM2455A-0. Good luck, sir. James Earl Williams. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Williams charged with battery domestic violence. I've read the charging affidavit. I find uh, probable cause. Uh, does Mr. Williams qualify for pretrial release? He does. Okay. All right, I'm going to release Mr. Williams uh, on pretrial release. I'm going to require that he have no uh, hostile contact uh, with Morgan Faison. Um, so what that means for you, Mr. Williams, is uh, you're, you can have contact but no hostile contact. I have jurisdiction over you but not over her. Should she feel as though you're... Uh, contact is uh, hostile. All she's got to do is contact the police, and that will result in the revocation of your uh, pretrial release. And require that you maintain separate residences. You both reside at the 1045 Maxi Drive address, or does she just live there, or do you, you just live there? Um, well, we both we have a little baby together. Okay. All right. And when well, she be, when she be at work, I I watch them. Okay. I'm going to require that you that you maintain separate residences. You can't live together uh, until uh, this case is resolved or further order of the court. You will be permitted to go back one time to collect personal effects. You're on pretrial release, um, and I'm ordering no hostile contacts. You're going to want to be very careful that she does not perceive that your actions toward her are hostile, or she'll call the police. You'll get arrested and you know, revoke your pretrial release conditions. I'm going to order that you not have any... Uh, any uh, that you not consume any alcohol or drugs without prescription, that you not possess firearms or weapons of any kind. All right, yes. all right, that case number is 2020 MM307A W. All right, good luck, sir. I'm out of papers. Is that it? All right, anything else from the state? Anything else from the defense? All right. Well, the clerk says that I'm done, other than the signs, things I haven't signed. So at this point, we will be adjourned until tomorrow when you'll have a new, uh, another guest judge.